so our final topic, which is related, is um, tips and ideas for how about you actually go about raising money. Um, so yeah, I've I've been involved with businesses in the past where we've raised money. I must admit, my kind of roles in those businesses have tended to be more on the technical side of things. Um, and so, although I've had some participation, I get wheeled out occasionally to sit in front of potential investors and say, "Here, look, it's the technical guy. He can talk smart." Um, I I have had less of the experience of actually sort of going in and and finding these um, potential investors uh, up front. Um, and I know that, you know, in the few times that I've been involved in the sort of fundraising process, it can be very, um, depending upon how, uh, you know, desirable you are as a, uh, an investment date, it, that can go either really easy and swimmingly, or it can be a really hard, long slog where you're kind of going grinding and grinding and grinding. We talked the other week about Peloton who, who, uh, you know, had to go through 3000 people to find their angel investment <laughs> investors to start that business. So, um, you have been involved far more on the sort of uh, the business end of the, the money raising side of things. What, what are your uh, thoughts around sort of tips or, or things to look out for when you're actually sort of trying to raise money? Yeah, well, uh, there's not like an, an, an order. Uh, things usually are very, uh, you know, different depending on the industry uh, stage, uh, et cetera. But I will just throw stuff and you, you pick what you want. Um, so, I would say you initially early stage you should raise uh, as as little as possible and sweat as much equity as possible uh, certainly you don't need as much initially and delay it as much as possible all the fun all the rounds delay 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 um, try to uh, initially you raise equity but down the road you may consider debt uh, so if you have a cash flow uh, yeah and cheap debt maybe uh, that's good, but you should bear in mind and be careful because usually uh, debt holders uh, can take control of your company. So you may have like raised seven, 10 millions or whatever, uh, and just 1 million in debt. Uh, and if you don't pay it, they can take control. So uh, yeah, that, so it has more weight over usually the articles or uh, shareholder agreements or uh, just the companies uh, act themselves. Uh, another, another stuff would be, I mean, then of course there are very complicated structures that put all conditions here and there. If you start doing preferred shares, uh, this and that, so or senior loans and this and that, so uh, we are not going to get into that. But um, then also, as you said, it's a dating game. So if you want to raise money, uh, you need first of all do a, a research on who is. You should understand for sure. What's your industry um, and how, not only what's your industry, but what's your niche and how, and what's the lexic, let's say, the terminology that investors, like venture capitalists, look for when, uh, when, when investing in that industry. You know, you should not be too specific, but it should be like, you know, uh, nowadays they add tech at the end of every single industry. They say like, prop tech for property tech or ed tech for education tech or fintech or for finance tech or uh, biotech, uh, insert tech, you, you, never, you name it. I mean, it's, it's like all agro tech, anything. <laughs> but uh, even if you're not in a tech business, you, it, it will be, it could be, you know, renewable energy or whatever. Um, so ideally, if you want to increase your odds, you should uh, definitely you should know your industry, the problem you're solving, uh, and and your solution okay so you, you should have a differentiation points or, or competitive advantage so that's the very basic um, you should also have a team at least you should be two um, because they don't they won't invest in just one guy uh, it's too risky for them key man risk you know what something happens to this guy will lose all the more money uh, so that's not gonna work um, so yeah you need to uh, have a team but uh, it doesn't matter which one you do first, uh, but you should do these two before approaching investors, which is do your research. So understand the terminology and what, what they are looking. Once you understand your industry or terminology, uh, you should see uh, what's on trend within your industry, then the problem, the solution, and then go search for the investors that are investing in that industry, uh, in your country, because investors like uh, the founders to be in the same city, actually, not same country, better, 
Now, I mean, it's important, but same city is even better. So, uh, so you look for investors in your country, in your industry, and at your uh, stage. So it should be like seed is like very early stage or series A, B, or that you, you will check their ticket sizes, etc. So you build a list, uh, you can approach them on LinkedIn, connect with them and send them like a few notes or just email or call those funds. Um, you can start by angel investors, there are networks usually uh, on any major city or uh, venture capitalists, you know, uh, but then before reaching them out, you should have prepared a teaser uh, or a deck. It's called pitch deck or whatever. Um, I mean, if you are a more mature company, you can have a, the, the so-called one pager. So this one page will like you can show already traction, so which is what they care about. But then, if you're very early, you should tell the story. It's important you tell the story. It's a dating, uh, yeah, process. So. Uh, yeah, you should, uh, doesn't need to, it should be anywhere between 10 and 20 pages, maybe 10 and 30 pages, it could be less, doesn't matter. Uh, but you should make sure you, um, that these guys receive, you should keep it short for sure. And uh, it should be more illustrative than like a, you know, university word document that you hand in to your uh, professor. Uh, it should be more illustrative and very to the point problem, solution, uh, yeah, competitive advantage, our team, financial projections, and the proposal, how much you're raising for how much, uh, for how much equity or if you're raising debt, so the terms of the investment. Um, and yeah, you should benchmark, uh, of course, before, as part of your research, you should check which other companies are doing that. And this is actually a very important point. So when you check uh, if our companies are doing that, that doesn't mean that you should not do it. Uh, at all uh, you, you can argue how you would do it better or to other countries and most importantly and this is counterintuitive uh, for many entrepreneurs um, if the investors don't find anyone doing what you are suggesting to do that's a red flag for them because it means that they don't know if there is a market or even if there is a market for that problem they don't know if your proposed solution is the right solution because there is no evidence anywhere in the world that someone is doing that. So then that's a red flag for them. And it could be an amazing opportunity. Now it could be like a new category, but usually it's not a new category. Uh, sometimes it is. Uh, and it's hard, of course, for investors. You know, they, that's when they get it's a red flag, which doesn't mean they won't invest, but it's, uh, you will need them to provide way more supportive information. I mean, a team should have experience. Uh, there needs to be some underlying, you know, proof of something or some MVP you did that proves some direction uh, towards what you are proposing. Um, so, so yeah, finding someone uh, or some 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 companies uh, doing uh, what you plan to do, even if it's not exactly the same. Uh, it could be beneficial for you, uh, even if it's in other countries as well, especially if it's in other countries sometimes, because you're gonna, you have there a point saying, look, it's working in this country, we're going to do it in our country, and we don't have much competition or no competition, so the business model works, uh, we're going to do it here because of this and that. So yeah, I think uh, those are kind of, of the essentials. Uh, then prepare for a lot of rejection, um, yeah, a lot. Um, and yeah, your odds will be very, very, very tiny, uh, like less than 1% conversion rate. So then it's a volume game. Um, also, they like innovative businesses, but you don't need to be too innovative. Uh, and especially avoid being too smart when you talk or when you present the, I mean, you don't use like overly complicated terminology or, or, or keywords uh, like, you know, SaaS, uh, biotech, uh, you know, cloud-based, um, yeah, nano carbon tubes developer. <laughs> like uh, just combining all, uh, don't try to be, you know, like um, too smart uh, because remember they, they need to understand it very quickly. You will have like, uh, they need to get it within 90 seconds probably. And if, if, they, if you don't 
get them to understand what you want to do in that, or the opportunity at least. Forget about the solution, maybe they will struggle a bit more, but if they don't see the opportunity in 90 seconds, they, they, they will just pass, 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 don't even reply in many cases. So um, yeah, try to get feedback, uh, I think from mentors or other entrepreneurs, share. Uh, and we talked about this in previous podcasts, uh, so about you know protecting your idea, uh, like no one should know it, they were gonna steal it. Uh, and usually it's not the case. The idea is not the most important thing, it's about execution. So just share it with people that can provide um, uh, you know, um, an opinion, like a qualified opinion, uh, and, and, and just seek uh, constructive criticism. Uh, don't just seek for validation. Uh, and, and don't ask your friends and family unless they are qualified. Um, and take, you may agree or not, but critics is what you need, especially at the beginning. So you may then take, you know, change things or not. Usually you, you end up doing that. Uh, and, and then, yeah, you are, so, so, so do all this research, validations, uh, changes, um, preparation, I would say, um, at, before you reach out to investors, because there, there won't be many and your odds are low, so you want to maximize them uh, and then just keep trying. It's a, it's a long process as well, I would say. Uh, to secure investment, it will take months. Uh, anywhere between, I mean, it depends a lot, but anywhere between three and nine months. Um, three, of course, is very optimistic. I may, maybe seed, you know, not much money and, and you did very well. Uh, and then normally it takes between six and 12. So that's why between three and nine, you should expect at least to have, uh, within the first three months though, since you start racing, you should, you should have some leads, like solid leads. And then you get into a due diligence, data room, and yeah, then close it. Uh, so uh, yeah, any other thoughts for, for this topic for entrepreneurs that I know you are, um, quite sensible on that. So you are, as you said, you are open-minded and open and keen to, uh, to, to grow, to raise investments and grow, but they're not for the sake of raising money. <laughs> yeah, so maybe that's important as well. Uh, and I think, uh, if, I think that mindset is important for the investor as well. So if, so if you are, uh, you know, uh, cost conscious and, 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 and cash flow driven or, or you are seeking profits rather than uh, the classic, oh, we'll capture market share and then, then we'll make money. Um, that's usually a red flag as well. Yeah, I think uh, two, two points that I would make, and this is more um, about the experience of raising money rather than... Um, you know, specific tips for how to go about doing it. But <clears throat> it's very, um, like, it feels like a high school social occasion, meaning so the one thing that I found really sort of frustrating but interesting was that when you, even when you get some interest and you get people lined up, actually getting the money in and over the line can also be, like, quite painful. Um, even with people who have like agreed uh, in essence to sort of give you money. And the reason being is because if there's more than one person or a group of people who are investing in your company, then no one really wants to be the first one to move. I don't know. It's like old high school dances where all the boys are on one side and all the girls on the other side and they just sort of stare at each other across the, no one wants to be the first one who sort of steps onto the dance floor. Um, and so it's very much kind of part of your role is to just sort of try and, cajole people over the line and so you know i found it very much like you know feeling like you're in a sort of a line of people at the start line and going like oh are we gonna go no no you read no what are you okay no you don't want to know what's going it's just so be prepared for just that crap just to happen and you just got to sort of roll with it and then it, you know it usually it goes all right someone will someone will pull the trigger and you know you can have phone calls and do that kind of stuff um and the other point is on um, opinions around like pitch deck and, and things like that. Um, it is good to solicit opinions and it's also good to get feedback from, you know, people that you present the pitch deck to like um, um, people that you pitch to and things like that. Um, 
and you know getting those replies is important but also be aware i would say like as soon as you ask someone for an opinion even if they didn't have one before they will magically come up with one and you know because you've asked them right so it's like oh i feel like i should have an opinion so okay i'm gonna some stuff's gonna come out and you will get so much conflicting opinion you will get the exact opposite from different people so you know you could have one thing in your pitch deck and someone will say oh that's stupid take that out replace it with this and the next person will say no that's stupid replace it with that and it's the thing you just took out and it's just bear in mind that there is no right answer and no there is no definitive pitch deck that you can put in front of every single investor which will convince them to invest in your company it's just not a thing it's very personalized you know different investors have different likes and dislikes appetites for stuff a lot of it will be very a lot of what they say will won't even be rational it'll be irrational kind of stuff it's like oh well i don't really like the pink he views there and the thing goes well the pink doesn't matter you know they're just coming up with stuff because you've asked for them so a bit like when you do customer research is you don't want to take everything that comes out of a customer's mouth as gospel truth you want to try and look for the patterns in the feedback that you're receiving so definitely ask for the feedback and take it graciously but sort of look for the larger things if every single person you ask has said well you're missing this then you should add that um whereas if jeff vc over there says well you know you need this if you're in biotech then your pitch deck needs to be green and then barbara vc over there goes oh well no it's biotech it should be blue and you know it's like you know so yeah. just be be aware that these aren't like this is not the gospel from on high coming down upon you these are just people with opinions and they're not less you know some of them are smart some of them are less smart and it's just horses for courses yeah just to wrap it up and following what you're saying which is totally true um so I also don't waste too much time on the design i would say uh, of the deck so yeah it should be it should look good you know and readable but uh, yeah, just don't bother too much. I, actually, if you do it too perfect from a design point of view, you were saying the colors, this and that, and you, you're, the, it already tells the investor that you are not working as hard uh, in the company. And you should, you should be, given it takes so much time to raise money, you should uh, be doing something for the company. So another tip would be keep the investors updated. Many will tell you, many, many will tell you, oh, it's interesting, but you are not ready yet. So, 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 and you should not take that, uh, oh, then this is not going to work for me. Just keep a list. Uh, it's important. Keep a, a list of all your contacts and what they said and when, and se uh, segregate them into who are at which stage uh, and who are open for you to keep them in the loop and have a newsletter, maybe once every three months or two months or whatever you think, or anytime you just hit a milestone, you know, send them to all of just to keep them posted. So it's all about, again, if you're dating, they need to trust you and know you somehow. And, and the, the, the longer you have been, you know, contacting them, uh, the more likely it's that they'll say, oh, look, this guy has been, these guys have been around for a while. Um, yeah, and they, they, I have seen their progress. Let's talk to them now. Or let's, yeah, I, I think now they're ready. So... You will be surprised how many times you know you hit some milestones and then somehow you survived <laughs> uh, your startup survived one year or two and then then you're ready maybe uh, so um, yeah you should keep all doors open and keep you know uh, all those um, lists uh, saved uh, and and also touching on the other point you said that even if you have solid leads that you think you are gonna they're going to invest, uh, be, be prepared for like, you know, unexpected shit going on. Uh, so, um, there are investors who don't have money and they like to, you know, be around. They, they it kind of elevates their ego. Be prepared for, to deal with many investors that have big egos. Um, um, yeah. So, so, and they like to be for some reason, you know, uh, hanging around and, um, and they don't have money or they think they will secure their money. So be, be, um, be sure that they, they do have it uh, ready to invest and they are not closing their fund or, uh, or you know, if there is a private equity, many times they don't have money on their balance sheet, they will just need to turn around and raise money for your project. So when they say we're gonna invest, 
um, ask them. So do you have money in your balance sheet? Do you have a fund? How much money do you have left? Or how many start, when is the deadline you know, of, for your investments? So those kind of questions, you will um, manage better your expectations as well with them. Great stuff. Okay, that's our podcast for this week. Thanks very much for listening. We're back every Thursday. Please check out our YouTube channel where we post this podcast and our other videos. You can search for net workers. That's two words. Or you can find the link in the show notes for this podcast. If you're interested in help, mentorship, and courses for entrepreneurship and starting businesses, please do check out our website, which is at networkers.co. See you all next time. See you. Bye.